在一九六五年，我到这个学校念书，念中文，可是现在差不多都忘了，老错了，对不起。我们给你们。欢迎到 Monterey 的摩西联国会，希望你们喜欢这个小新闻发布会。我想借小 Jonathan Barkey 从联合国协会。Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Barkey, founder of the International School to School Partnerships, a nonprofit organization based here in Carmel. I'm also on the board of the United Nations Association, Monterey Bay chapter, serving youth here on the、uh, peninsula.、Uh, we support schools such as yours and attend the Lyceum Model UN event each year. I was able to visit your sessions this morning and saw all of you participating in the Model UN event. I'm very impressed with your presentation、uh, capability, dialogue, and、uh, debating, which was absolutely amazing. In the UN general session, you addressed sustainable development issues focused on natural disasters worldwide. In the security session, you addressed one of the most difficult conflicts in decades, currently in Syria. In this session, you had an amazing debate addressing issues of conflict resolution and collaboration, representing many countries globally. Fabulous work, everyone! I also witnessed the important skill sets that you learned today,、uh, including the following: public speaking, problem solving, debating, negotiation, and team building. In summary, you have all become diplomats and world leaders today. I know that the、uh, United Nations Association membership will be very impressed with this work, as I report back to them next week at the board meeting. I applaud you all for this wonderful work that that you have done. Also, as I'm also on the founding、uh, board of the International School to School Partnerships, we have a mission of creating a global classroom. Today we were hoping to have live internet transmission with another Model UN event in Beijing, China. But unfortunately, with the 15 hours、uh, time difference apart, it's 6 a.m. there right now. We are unable to do a live broadcast. However, recording、uh, this version, we can we can do that. Can we please、uh, get all of you? Participating today up here on the front stage, and、uh, we will send a message to、uh, the Chinese Foreign Affairs University、um, in、uh, Beijing. Thank you very much for your time today. Hi everyone, my name is Ellen. I'm a program coordinator at the Lyceum. And I'm actually no longer going to be a program coordinator in about a week because I'm graduating from Miss.、Um, so this is my last ceremony, and I have to say I am so happy that this was my last because it was amazing.、Um, so thank you, everyone. So up here are the student representatives that were chosen from each committee to represent、um, the committee on a whole. So before we get started on our committee briefing, I'd like to go down and just hear a little bit about you, your name,、um, the country that you were representing today, and your school. So we'll start with、uh, the Security Council. My name is Jonah Cortman, and I represented China today on the Security Council, and I'm from Monterey Bay Charter School. Um, my name is Lucy Cole. I represented Ukraine today on the Security Council, and I am also from Monterey Bay Charter School. I am Isabella Flores. I represented the United Kingdom on the FAO, and I am also from Monterey Bay Charter School. My name is Willow Black, and I am representing China on the FAO, and I'm homeschooled. My name is Hannah Shu. I am currently 12 years old.、Um, I represented. Bangladesh, and I'm from International School of Monterey. Go Dolphins! <laughs> <laughs> 
My name is Colette Gazelle. I am also 12 years old. Uh, I go to Bayview Academy, and I represented Australia. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. So first, I'd just like to um, give them a round of applause for being up here. I know that's scary. <laughs> Wonderful. So I have a few questions for them to get the ball rolling, but then I'll open it up to the audience. So make sure you start thinking of some awesome questions for these representatives. And they can take challenging questions, so give them some hard ones. Um, my first question is, what were some of the challenges in creating and agreeing upon resolutions in your committee? Um, so of course, let us know if you reached a resolution or if you did not as well. Um, Security Council reached a resolution and one of the main difficulties was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was China. And we really like Assad and would not like to see him out of power. And that was difficult. Yeah, it was difficult to deal with him. And <laughs> so basically, we had people who, whose main things that they wanted to come to a res resolution on were complete opposites, so we decided at, in the end to focus on something that we could agree on, which was the um, how to combat the ISIS aspect of the situation in the Middle East. Thank you. And for the parents who were not working with your students um, in this particular committee, this committee focused on the situation in the Middle East. So um, in my committee, we did not reach a resolution, but one of the most difficult things about trying to reach a resolution was how like everyone like disagreed with each other and the countries had like almost opposite views. And there was just like stuff that we couldn't like actually agree on. Everyone was like really strong on like certain ideas and others were strongly opposed and it was just like hard to come up with something. But yeah, we were not able to come up with a resolution, but hopefully we will be able to next time. Uh, one of the main difficulties was that some people didn't agree with the resolutions and like with what the resolutions were talking about. And that the FAO focused on uh, sustainable use of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. So um, while we were writing a resolution, we did have some uh, misunderstandings with um, the committee. So some people thought uh, we didn't, uh, the writers didn't really explain well with a resolution. Some people agreed. So we had to make some modifications with our um, resolution to make everyone happy with it. Yeah, so um, we had like kind of come to a resolution and we had typed it out. And then I think it was two countries, three people, I don't, I don't know, a few countries um, started to make their own resolution and so then there was kind of controversy over which resolution um, was better and like which one would work. And also there was kind of controversy over if they were different at all because they were like super alike. And so we weren't really sure if um, they were different. So eventually we just voted on it. And so um, the, re the resolution passed. And so, yeah. Thank you. And General Assembly focused on uh, sustainable development and disaster risk reduction. Um, so a few of you mentioned um, really opinionated folks um, and countries that didn't disagree. But I was wondering if you yourself disagreed from your country's point of view and if your viewpoint was different, how did you work on representing the country fully even though you maybe had an inner struggle? China's views were pretty crazy. <laughs> so <coughs> I wouldn't expect anyone to agree with them. But I mean, it was Except, fun to, you know, China probably agrees. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun to get into it and embrace China. <laughs> um, Ukraine doesn't really have a strong opinion of, about the situation in the Middle East, so it was kind of easy to find what they did have opinions about and work with that. The thing about um, my topic in the UK, I would say that they didn't necessarily didn't really have like a strong viewpoint on it, and a lot of the other countries didn't really have strong viewpoints on it either. And if they did, the thing is that they kind of came up with um, 
stuff that was a bit hard to agree on and stuff that necessarily didn't make any sense. So, uh, like, me and, like, a few other countries had tried to, you know, uh, oppose their views, but I guess, like, majority wins and people kind of went with what they were doing, even if, like, it didn't make sense. So I thought it was, like, pretty hard to try to, you know, keep my views and, like, not get into, like, my real self. But, yeah, it was, like, really hard because a lot of people, like, didn't agree. And I myself, like, didn't agree on what they were saying a lot. And, yeah, it was pretty hard. I did not agree on my country's position, but... And it was a little bit hard to be um, someone else's position, but it was really fun. Um, as being a disaster, uh, disaster risk uh, country, Bangladesh, um, I was pretty, uh, Bangladesh was, um, in the real world, was pretty open with other ideas. So me and my partner, uh, we were really open with other people's ideas. And we agreed with most of them, but we did have to like modify most some of them too to make more sense. So um, <clears throat> my partner and I, uh, Camila Geronimo, um, we so we had kind of already come up with like a plan even before we started doing research and everything. And then we started doing research, and we realized that Australia has already kind of started doing our plan. So then, like, it, it, like, worked out perfectly and stuff, so that was really cool. Um, apart from learning how to argue maybe a position from an alternative point of view, what other skills did you learn or utilize during this conference, and how do you think that skill could benefit you in the future? I learned a lot of public speaking, which helps a lot in the future, especially if you're somebody that makes a lot of speeches. Um, I learned a lot about how to compromise and try to get <coughs> to the root of the problem, I guess, with a limited amount of time. And that's just useful because it's a good skill to have, I think. Um, well, I learned well, two things. The first one was that I had to learn how to be able to also compromise with what other people had wanted and not just focus on what you want for yourself, but what would be better for everyone. And it'd be a good skill to have in the future because you can't be selfish. You got to be considerate to everyone. And the second was public speaking. Like, I don't even like know how, but I just felt like at this conference that like I had opened up like a lot and I'm able to like speak out a lot more because like, let's say yesterday, I would have never like wanted to come up here, but like I actually like volunteered myself this time. So yeah, it would help in the future because you're always gonna wanna like be able to speak your mind and opinion and not be like scared to say what you want. At this conference, I learned a lot of public speaking and I was able to do a lot of talking. <clears throat> and public speaking is a really good skill to have in life. So it was really good. Um, this uh, Model UN conference helps me with um, my confidence booth and my p public speaking, which, as she said, is very important in life because for, um, in the future you're going to have projects that you have to explain uh, related to your work or interviews or even school projects. And um, it also taught me patience, too, because we had to work out some stuff. Uh, yeah, this conference definitely tested my patience because I'm not generally a patient person and like to like have like always have someone like disagree was just like so like infuriating because like like <laughs> like you have to actually face it that you're never going to all agree. So finally you just have to like come to a vote. But um, also like it actually kind of taught me how to like actually like work on projects and stuff because like <laughs> usually I just push it until the last minute but with this position paper my partner my partner and I actually didn't even amount of work which usually never happens so yeah <laughs> wonderful lots of really important skills to develop final question from me before I open it up to the audience but were um, there any unexpected partnerships that you um, didn't foresee or any um, really strong coalitions that you saw develop? 
I didn't really see any unexpected ones because, I mean, it was kind of clear who everybody liked and disliked. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty obvious. Yeah, there were some things that I expected to happen that didn't happen, but not really anything that I didn't expect to happen that happened. There were some countries that I didn't think would have a strong opinion about it, but they talked a lot, so I guess they did. Um, you like can answer that instead if there was something that you expected to happen that didn't. Okay. Well, like um, they had said, like I was kind of expecting like the people like in my group, like who they would partner up with because like they said, it's pretty obvious like who's gonna like, who's like the best friends out of the group and stuff. <laughs> but like, um, I also wasn't like expecting to like get to know the other people as much as I thought I did because like I'm that kind of person like I kind of wait for people to come talk to me but I realized that I have to come up to them so I wasn't really expecting to like get to know everybody and really like start talking to them so yeah I thought that was like pretty cool. Well, there were no really unexpected partnerships, but most people agreed on most of the things, though there were a couple people who didn't agree with a lot of the things that were going on. I think you could tell in the beginning, the first session, when we had our first unmoderated caucus, you could tell, like, who went together first and, like, who just went together first. Like, just, or, for example, like... Um, me and me and my partner, like some of our classmates were in our um, session, in our um, assembly, so like we just kind of like went together, so. And then other people started like coming with us and then we all kind of connected and then there's like another group of people who knew each other and yeah. One thing that actually surprised me if I think about it is like the three, the three countries that kind of formed one side of the argument was Australia, Bangladesh, and um, Chile. And like, it's kind of just interesting because they're like almost pretty unrelated countries. And like, those were the three countries that actually had similar views, um, which, I felt, which I found was pretty interesting. And basically those three countries just started like trying to get people onto their side, but yeah. <laughs> so now I'm gonna open it up to the audience. If you have any questions, I can bring a mic to you. Ooh. Uh, what was the best or funniest thing that happened during Model <laughs> UN? I'm afraid for this answer, but go ahead. <laughs> Probably that everybody was against China. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody liked me. Yeah, it was pretty funny to watch Jonah try to convince people that he was right. <laughs> um, <laughs> That was probably the best part. Um, in this conference, I wouldn't say in, well, in my um, group, I wouldn't say necessarily anything really funny happened, but like, yeah, we were all like, we weren't like serious, but you know, people just weren't like joking around, like trying to be funny and stuff. They were kind of just being like, immature. I don't know. <laughs> so it was kind of funny, I guess, or like, annoying, kind of funny, <laughs> in a way, to see, like, you know, everybody just, like, being, like, really weird and just, like, not, like, thinking it's right. Yeah, like she said, there wasn't really anything particularly funny that happened, but, like, some things that were a little bit funny. Um, I think a funny thing was um, when we were doing our resolutions, like I feel, I feel like some of us were like, like you could see like, like the madness like in their face, and then they were like, oh, you have to agree with me. Like, like they didn't show it, but like you could see like the anger in their eyes, and it was kind of funny to watch them. Yeah, I also saw like just a bunch of people that were getting so fed up because a bunch of people would like say like, can you reword this one word? And I just saw people around the room that were just like is this really necessary? <laughs> and also there's like, it was kind of funny because like one side of the room would ha like do nothing but like make motions and like vote and like, s yeah, and like make <laughs> points and stuff. And then the other half would just be like silent unless they were asked to speak. And it was just kind of funny because like 
um, whenever sometimes the chair would just be like, anyone on this side would like to speak? <laughs> yeah. Nope, okay. <laughs> The funniest moment for me, as I come to this next question, uh, is the difference between seeing everyone in the morning huddled around the breakfast table, planning and strategizing, and then at lunch they were like playing flip cup and like trying to like lay on water bottles the wrong way. It was a really funny transformation from the morning nerves to the afternoon. What was your favorite part of the conference? Favorite part of the conference? Probably the arguing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that is seconded. <laughs> um, my favorite part of the conference was when I wrote a resolution that Jonah couldn't veto, and he just looked at me like, why would you do this to me? <laughs> so that was great. Um, my favorite part of the conference was probably getting to disagree and argue with everyone and trying to be like really strong on my point of views and then just seeing like the look on their faces of them being like really like bothered by it and just like arguing and disagreeing with whatever they're saying and like saying that it's bad or wrong. I especially liked the, the writing of resolutions and trying to come to a resolution. Um, I think collaborating with my partner, Sian Amalan, was, like, really fun, and it made me and her, like, more closer together as partners. Also, I also thought um, gathering information for our resolution paper from other countries was, like, really fun, too, and also convincing others to, like, um, our uh, resolution. Um, I think the best part was lunch, because... <laughs> 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 the food was really good, and we also, we did have many competitions for, like, flipping the little water bottles that we had, and, like, at one point, actually, I told uh, JD, because he, he was, he kept flipping his bottle, that if he, like, capped it, which is, like, landing it on, like, the little cap, and it's, like, really hard to do, if he capped it in, like, one try, I would give him $200, and he didn't, so I'm glad that that didn't happen. <laughs> uh what was the uh, most funny uh, emotion pass that somebody brought before you? Resolution, emotion, anything. What was the funniest requests brought before the, the council? Any funny motions or? That, that kind of thing, like the stuff you had to vote on. <laughs> the best motion was to remove France from the council. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a point when it was kind of just open yelling and there were motions to remove China and France from the council and the conference and Uruguay, yeah. Any other funny ones? No? Um, well, this wasn't this year, but last year we had a bunch of motions to end it and go to lunch last year. <laughs> like, we kept motioning for lunch and it kept being denied until finally everyone was hungry enough. But that, that was last year. But yeah, this year there wasn't oh. many funny motions. And also, um, before lunch, we had a vote, to, uh, like, a vote to see, like, if we wanted to go to lunch, like, early or not. Like, everyone just, like, raised their black cards, like, <laughs> as fast as they could. And they're like, boom. Breaks are important. Yes. Um, was there like a country that you were surprised did a lot? <laughs> Do you mean like <laughs> countries that weren't mega countries or point of information? Could you clarify your question? <laughs> Like, let's say that there's um, some random country you've never heard of, and then they end up, like, doing a lot. Unknown countries that helped facilitate or contributed more than you expected? Ukraine. Ukraine? Um, I would say Uruguay, probably, because they're a really small South, South American country, which I didn't expect to be involved in the Middle East. At one point, they were offering to open, like, a draft which I thought was really confusing. But they, dirt, they certainly said a lot. I wouldn't say really like any of like the smaller countries really contributed like a whole lot, but I was surprised to see the amount of like um, 
work, I guess, that Sudan, the person that was Sudan, had put into this. Like, I was surprised that their their views had like affected this um, situation. Like, it it it, um, it affected the situation more than I'd actually expected. Like, being like a country like that, like I didn't expect that at all. I don't feel like there was really any country that was really unexpected and was like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think China was unexpected because I I know them like as a person, and I know they're like really young as in uh, Model UN, and I think they did like amazing, and they were all confident, and they were like contributing into um, the session a lot. So thank you, China. <laughs> um, I think Vanuatu just because they're such a small country and they certainly had a lot to say. Um, they were super stubborn and like it was it was but it was actually kind of fun because like in the beginning we didn't have any opposition and then Vanuatu started like gathering some followers and then like the, and then we actually got to do a debate so yeah for sure. Any other questions for our? Oh yeah, absolutely, parents and teachers. Or committee chairs. No? Oh, here we go. Did you have one? If you could make an improvement for next year's Model United Nations, what would you make it? I don't really know. It's pretty good how it is. And we're not going to extend lunch, so. <laughs> More muffins in the morning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The food was better this year. I know a couple years ago they posted the, um, the, the position papers on the website, and I thought that was cool, but they didn't do that this year. So I would say that. You can do that. Sure. Um, this is my first time doing Model UN, but I would have to agree with her that it would be cool to like look at other people's position papers, and I, I thought it was like pretty like cool like the way it is. But if I had to make an improvement for myself, I would say like not to like procrastinate to do my research as much so I can be as prepared as possible and not just like make up stuff on the go and actually like get my stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> well, like they said, um, it was really cool when they put the position papers on the website because then you'd know what everyone's position pa uh, positions were before the conference. It was even time for the conference. Honestly, I think this year I did really well because I remember last year, it was my first year, and I can't. I, I registered late, and I, I honestly had no idea what I was doing. I had... I had some contribution, contribu contribu contribution, contribution. Sorry, and but like I feel like, like and then like I, I I was just following around people who were like more experienced than me, and like I like I really didn't know how to write anything. I didn't know how to write resolution. I did not know how to write position paper. But like I feel like this year I like learned so much from last year, and I learned so much from my teacher, uh, Miss Susan Matthews. Um, and I think a message to all the new people that are in Model UN, I think you should learn from your mistakes from this year, and then I think you'll be really successful next year. So, yeah. Um, I think one thing, I don't know if this is like, I don't know, but it, one thing that was just kind of weird this year is uh, Uruguay in Security Council, they, they go to my school, and I remember... Um, Uruguay wasn't even on their country list. They just like, yeah. they just got randomly put <laughs> as that country. I thought that was just kind of funny. I don't know, but also like, but I think it was just because they wanted to be in Security Council and like that was one of the countries that was left. But I don't know. I think um, I think it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. What was your least favorite part of the conference? <laughs> Mine was not being able to veto any resolutions. Mine, mine was probably when we got like so off topic that we ended up talking about like the politics in Germany for some reason. Like that was like really frustrating. 
Okay, so um, my least favorite part, I would say, is like um, people like not really like taking it seriously as they should. Like I understand like if you look, if you can like joke around and stuff, but not just be like not even into the topic at all and just like not doing anything and being like immature. And like I did learn from this conference to try to be a bit more like patient in a way. But I thought like I really didn't like when just people like show that they didn't really care and when they would just put like stuff that didn't make sense on the resolutions and it would like get past still and the stuff that did make sense would get tabled. Well, after we wrote a resolution and it passed, then we just did like a subtopic inside of our topic which nobody was really getting anywhere with it and that just wasn't, it was really confusing. Uh, let's see. What was the least, part? least part? Okay, I think it was. I think it was the first session when we were explaining our position papers. It was like really intimidating to like listen to other people's position papers because like I thought like ours was like like I feel like other people's position paper was like really good, and like I felt like I wasn't like we're like oh shoot, but then like we're like we're gonna fail this thing. Like I don't want it to be like last year, but I think. That was, I think that was, it just, it was just like made me scared and everything. But I think another part that I didn't really like was most people, some people like didn't really like cooperate with some of us and then like they weren't contributing as much as I wanted them to be. Like I wanted everyone in our committee to do something, but there's just like some people, like I want an equal amount of everyone's work, but like some people just did less and some people didn't even do anything. Um. I think my least favorite part was probably just like all of the arguing because like the debating kind of just turned into like pointing fingers and stuff and it was, yeah, probably just that. Okay, so you talked about learning from your mistake. So did you realize sometimes in the middle of an argument that you couldn't defend your position any longer and how difficult was it to recognize that you were wrong? That's a good question. <laughs> As China with their crazy ideas, I couldn't really admit that they were wrong because I kind of had to stick to it. So there was no caving in, especially because I had veto power. Yeah. That didn't really happen to me, but I definitely watched that happen to a lot of different people. I know a lot of motions were like put forward, and then when they were like questioned, people would be like, oh, wait, never mind. I don't need to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like, kind of, like, similar to her, like, my country, like, that didn't really, like, happen to me where I had to be, like, proven wrong, but I watched, like, the other people when they were, like, proven wrong and they were kind of just, like, they're not saying anything or, like, they made up some, like, ridiculous stuff that didn't even, like, make sense to the topic just because they didn't want to, like, admit they were wrong, but, like, yeah. Well, that didn't happen to me, but... As she said, like, a couple people kind of did that. Um, I think one of the sessions, uh, there was one random thing that popped out. It was weird. Like, I, they didn't happen to me, but it happened to someone else. And they just said something. I think they made it up. I don't know if it was, like, a joke or not, but, like, it was totally untrue. And when you thought about it, it was, like, like, you question yourself, like, why, you know? It was, it was really weird, and then, it, I don't know. Well, like, one thing was, um, so, a few countries, like, we, they came up, we, we came up with a resolution and everything, and then a few of the opposing countries, um, like, came up, well, they didn't actually, like, write it out or anything, but they came up with ideas for a different resolution, and so then we were trying to find a middle ground, but then, like, when we did, each side would just like start arguing and accusing each other and just like start changing their ideas and both sides and so it just never really got anywhere. So eventually we just voted on it and you know, <laughs> yeah. If you could give one word of advice um, to future participants, what would it be? Uh, definitely study your topic a lot and your, um, like your country's views and don't procrastinate. <coughs> procrastinate. Um, maybe even if your country doesn't have a strong, a strong position on your topic, 
you can look into your country's how your country feels about the other countries that feel strongly about the topic because that might give you a better idea and also just like it's not as scary as it seems so do like if you do your research you'll be fine um i would have to say like you need to like i would recommend like learning about your topic a lot learning about all the model un rules and like trying your best on your position paper because if you like learn all these rules and do all these things then you'll be fine for the conference day and like please don't be like me don't procrastinate make time to do it even if it's hard just don't be like on the weekends like doing it late at night like rushing to do it like try to do it as early as possible and it's not really like I was really scared when I first like came here today, but as soon as like I got into the flow of it, it's really honestly not that bad. Well, to study your topic um, a lot and also to come prepared so you have everything ready and make sure you know your topic really well. I think um, to, uh, to future Model UN uh, participants, look at all the topics first and choose a good country. and. That and if you choose a good country, I think you get a higher chance of being more successful in the um, meeting. And um, also, be prepared. Get like, just have all your information like good, uh, like in good um, condition. And also, um, bring a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> we got a um, well, like she said, um, pick. Uh, unless you want to like challenge yourself by putting yourself into someone else's shoes. Um, if you want the easy way, <laughs> try to pick countries that have similar opinions to yourself. And also be patient and try not to stand up and start yelling at people. <laughs> Dear delegates, thank you so much uh, for your participation. It was wonderful. My question is, uh, where is that line between giving up to peers pressure and wanting to achieve compromise and resolution and representing your country's needs and desires. For example, for China, why, <laughs> why you did not exercise your right of veto and for everybody else, where is that point for you? Uh, for China, veto power only came when um, they, it was like against them. So, like, if something was made against Assad, then uh, China would have to immediately veto it. And China was kind of for money and power. So I had to stay in that kind of view, and I had to veto anything that came against that. Yeah, so before I wrote the resolution, I went around and asked the people who, ha who would have vetoed, like um, China and Russia, like what will it take for you not to veto this? Because I didn't want to write like 10 resolutions. So we kind of did that and avoided the topics that there were major disagreements on. Okay, so like if you didn't know already, in um, the, the only countries that have, um, well the only group that has veto power is the Security Council and there are only certain countries in the Security Council that can veto things. So that didn't apply to us really, but like, yeah. I don't have anything to say on this. That's okay. Well, so kind of if like a resolution that you don't agree with and everyone votes like except you, then it's gonna pass even if you don't want it to. Because we don't have veto power in this council. Uh, also with uh, their committee, we also did not have veto power. So I have nothing to say for <laughs> this question. <laughs> um, well, one thing that you have to remember is like majority rules, so it, you know, you might not get what you want and that's okay because chances are you're going to get something that you want and, you know, that's cool. So you're not going to get everything that you want, but chances are you're not going to get everything that you don't want either. So, Thank you so much, delegates. Are there any final points or motions? Where are you? There you are. Motion to uh, adjourn the session until next year. There's a motion to adjourn the session. Is that seconded? No. I see a seconded. 
<laughs> All those in favor? Motion passes. Sorry, France.